Alrighty, so here's the deal. Usually I do these Q&As towards the end of the week, but enough of you after the last Q&A tweeted questions out that I think I could fit another Q&A in this week, so that's what I'm going to do. So thanks to you guys that took Twitter and tweeted your questions to add OTRS Central, both wrestling and non-wrestling related. Hint, hint, that's how you can get questions asked in the future if you so choose. So let me go ahead and get started here. Edsel4 kicks us off by asking, do you think WWE can offer... AJ Styles, the same deal they gave Samoa Joe by going to NXT and keeping his name. Well, I'm sure they can. I think the more uh, important question is, should they? And I think the answer is yes. I've never really understood why the WWE would want to bring in these guys that have wrestled under the same name as the same type of character for so many years and then immediately bring them in and want to change their name and try and change at least some, if not most, of who they are as a performer. I understand there's an adjustment there to the WWE style, if there even really is a style anymore, frankly. Um, but I've never really understood that. So I like the concept of a Samoa Joe coming in as Samoa Joe. You want to bring that audience over. You want to, you know, the whole thing is having having the control over the name isn't everything. And I think in a lot of ways it's a way for them to make more money, at least short term, by not sitting there and wanting to control that damn name. Because when you bring in somebody like, let's say, a Samoa Joe or like you would with an AJ Styles, that name is already established with a certain segment of the audience, especially with those that are watching NXT. So you don't have to take time to build up that name. You've already got that name. It already has some name recognition. That merch is going to move very well, at least initially, as you saw with Samoa Joe, you know, so on and so forth. I've never really been a big fan of having to always change the name with every single person. I think sometimes certain examples, certain situations, it's okay for those guys to keep their name. It really is. WWE doesn't need to control everything. And frankly, sometimes that's a problem is they control too much. They have too much leverage and the wrestlers, the workers have too little control. Uh, Rampager213, what are your thoughts on the next NXT, NXT excuse me, TakeOver Live special? Being in Brooklyn, New York, I think it's a good venue uh, or good location at least I should say. You've got a very hardcore, serious crowd there in New York City. You're getting NXT on the show, on the road. Uh, I think I think it's a win-win all the way around, honestly. Uh, Andy Sykal, if you could combine two wrestlers to help the tag team division, who would it be? It doesn't matter. You could have the freaking Road Warriors, the Brain Busters, the Rockers, the Heart Foundation, the British Bulldogs. The Natural Disasters, you know, the New Age Outlaws, Cactus Jack and Chainsaw Charlie. We would have so many damn tag teams. The Hardys, I believe. I don't know if I said them already. Edge and Christian, the Dudleys, Demolition. And it wouldn't freaking matter. The Midnight Express, the Rock and Roll Express. Uh, it, it wouldn't matter because the writing is so shitty for that division. It doesn't matter who's in there. What would happen is you would have characters that would appeal with no story to really uh, get people invested. Same thing that happens now. There are tag teams that can be very, very interesting. But if you don't spotlight them in the right way and you don't feature them in the right way and you most certainly don't write for them in the right way, then it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. So it doesn't, in this particular case, it's a good question. It's a fair question because I think it touches on the bigger point that it's not just about the individuals. The individuals can only overcome the environment and circumstance or situation that much. So it doesn't matter who the fuck you pair together. That's just me saying that. Uh, Mexoman00, are you going to watch the Tokyo special? Yeah, I actually didn't. I believe I've already put up the review for that special on this channel. Guest 5, why is Triple H pushing tough enough so much if it negates all the work they're doing with the guys and girls down at NXT? I dispute the fact that it's uh, negating what they're doing down there because those people that would win, the guy and the girl, on Tough Enough would ultimately end up at NXT. You know, they still have to go through NXT, so it's not like they're circumventing the developmental and going straight to the main roster. I think the bigger question is why bother because it's frankly a waste of time. Tough Enough has a serious credibility issue because most of the people that have won the show haven't went on to do shit, and it really hasn't produced much in terms of star power. And in particular, when you look at this season, you know, you don't have many knowable or recognizable names from the independent scene, at least as far as I can tell. Um, so that hurts. 
But just more importantly is, instead of the show being what WWE hopes it to be, which is the type of show that can appeal to a different type of audience and bring new eyeballs on the WWE product and brand, is you're just you're appealing to the same audience that you already have, and it's only playing to a portion of that audience. So it's, it's just a waste of time. And to me personally, I think Tough Enough is one tremendous waste of time. Call me King Trey 1. Will EC3 being the World Heavyweight Champion help or hurt TNA? You know, it's, it's such a shame because here's a guy that WWE always handed the short end of the stick. They shitted on him. They didn't give a fuck about him. They didn't give him anything to run with, anything to go with. So he goes to TNA, and you see a WWE breacher, but he doesn't really count because, frankly, it's not like WWE ever really did anything with him where most of the WWE audience would even recognize him. Most of them were just calling it as we see it. But he goes to TNA, Derek Bateman becomes Ethan Carter III, and they build this character, and they build this character, and they stay with this character, and they build this character some more, and they get to the point where the timing time is right for the guy to hold the world strap, to become the world heavyweight champion. And it doesn't fucking matter. I don't think it helps the company. I don't think that it hurts the company. Typical TNA fashion is they finally do something right, and it was too fucking late. You know, and it's a shame because, in theory, I would be very behind in Ethan Carter the third title reign in part because of how this company built them up. And after all the times of doing so many dumb dick things as a company like TNA has done over the years, I thought they finally, for the most part, got something right. And of course, now that they finally got something right, I don't care and I'm not going to watch their crowd. So that just goes to show you. Fucking figures. Frank Lawson, 44. When do you think Sheamus will cash in money in the bank, and do you think it'll be successful? Um, I think it will be successful. Because they're going to try and look at him as a future opponent for Lesnar. So for that reason, that reason alone, it needs to be that um, be that he, he has to cash in successfully. Uh, when? Could happen as soon as Battleground. Could happen as late as uh, late fall, early winter 2015. I don't think it'll go all the way to WrestleMania season. I think it'll happen some point in time in between now and the end of 2015. Um, that's that's my thought. Um, you also asked for an early Super Bowl prediction. Uh, wait a little over a month and then tune into the Schlag Daddy TV channel where I talk about football and other sports and other topics. And you'll get your answer there. See, that's called cross-promotion and mentioning the other channel and making you wait. I'm not just going to answer that now, brother. Uh, off Leather Wings. Do you think the Shield triple threat won't mean as much if we keep seeing them wrestle every week on Raw? Yeah, there's, some, there's something to be said about that. You know, does it really matter that much if they're doing a freaking triple threat? If Ambrose and Rollins have wrestled God knows how many times... And especially if Rollins and Reigns wrestled multiple times at some point in time. And the fact they're doing these tag matches where these guys always touch, yeah, well, I think it's, that's a good point. It might not matter as much. It'll still have meaning and significance, but it might not matter as much. Antonio 99085, who's more out of touch? Vince McMahon, Hall and Oates, or the Bears believing Cutler is an elite quarterback? The Bears. And it's not even close. How dare you put Hall and Oates into that same category, even though you called them Halls and Oates? Uh, so who's out of touch here, Antonio? <laughs> Vince McMahon is out of touch. He's been out of touch for close to two decades now. If he was out of touch in the late 90s and he was willing to admit it then, what the fuck is he now at almost soon to be 70 years of age in 2015? But it's not even close. The Bears believing that Jay Cutler deserved Aaron Rodgers' money when he can't beat Aaron Rodgers. The fact that they would tie themselves into a quarterback that had never established anything other than the fact that he was what he was, which is a maddeningly inconsistent, talented, yet underachieving quarterback that was not worth tying the franchise to, you know, those are the biggest idiots right there. And those are the biggest idiots that are out of touch. Um, let's see here. Michael Corbin. Should Sting have another match before he faces Taker at WrestleMania? Yes. I personally would like to see him have one match, maybe at Survivor Series. I would have liked to have seen it happen at SummerSlam, but I would take Survivor Series. I'd be a fan of him being part of a tag match or him doing a singles match. 
I'd like to see him work with Bray Wyatt. Seth Rollins. There's a couple of options right there. Uh, and he also asks, is Brock Lesnar only a big deal when he loses to somebody? Why or why not? Uh, no, as I said a little while back, it had gotten that bad to the point where I was happy that Brock Lesnar is back. I mean, in parts, he's a big deal. But is he really that big of a deal? You know, and, and to me, still the whole thing about him losing the streak is, is that if he's not going to put anybody over, they always find a way to hide him hide him or protect him, then what was the point of doing it? I'm just, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Demigod434, must be a CM Punk fan. What would you rather have as a WrestleMania 32 main event? Reigns versus Cena or Reigns versus Ambrose versus Rollins? Um, if I'm trying to give Reigns the championship, just hear out the scenario, if I want Reigns to walk out of 32 to the champion, then I want Cena to have the title because more likely than not, that means the crowd would have a good chance to get behind Reigns. Uh, from a story standpoint and from many other standpoints, I would probably take the Shield Triple Threat, though, if that was just me. Um, let's see here. Chairman 015 asked, Do you expect John Cena to drop the U.S. title to Kevin Owens at Battleground? Um, yes, but it's John Cena. You just never know. Let's see here. James Wilson, A. Wilson, 7993. What would you rather see? Hogan return to in-ring competition at WrestleMania 32 or Triple H versus Ray Lewis versus O.J. Simpson? Well, Triple H always promises murders. Ray Lewis covers them up. And O.J. Simpson may or may not have committed several of them. I'm pretty well sh assured that at WrestleMania 32, if that triple threat happened, that somebody's going to die at the hands of somebody else. I'll take that. And then afterwards, maybe when Ray Lewis covers up the fact that maybe OJ killed Triple H, he killed God, Ray can sit there and say that he found the Lord. You know, he contributed to the death of the Lord. And he can live in his born-again bullshit. And then he could sit there and fool everybody into buying into that born-again bullshit. You know, and then he could sit there and give Triple H's three daughters, you know, blood money for college and all this other crap. It kind of mirrors real life with Ray Lewis, doesn't it? And then years later, he can talk about the WWE when it comes to a certain scandal and try to tell everyone involved that there are some things you can cover up and some things you can't. He would know. Uh, let's see here. Call me King Trey. One asked another question. What's your Carolina Panthers record prediction for this season? Again, you'll have to tune in later in July and August to find that out on the Schlag Daddy TV channel. But I think they're positioned for a good thing. Uh, let's see here. What else do we got? If Sid Vicious, this has come C Sefer 96, if Sid Vicious joined the GFW invasion, would that help you tolerate that Memphis mid-card piece of crap? No, nothing will ever help me tolerate that Memphis mid-card piece of crap. However, however, would I at least have to tune into the segment that featured Psycho Sid, or would I have to catch it on the flip side? Absolutely. All right, let's see here. Uh, American Alicard, did you know that TNA Dixie Carter is a private owner to GFW, but let me guess, TNA, GFW, bad, WWE, Raw, NXT, good, right? See, this is the type of dumb shit I'm talking about. Is that even true? And does it even fucking matter? Instead of trying to argue the merits of TNA, of which there are very few anyways, you've always got to throw in these bullshit defense mechanisms that just weaken your argument. They don't strengthen it. And most of the times when I interact with you on Twitter, you say some of the dumbest, most ridiculous fucking shit that I have ever heard in my entire fucking life. If you cannot come strong with a good argument, then don't come with these weak-ass pathetic arguments. You like TNA. Good for fucking you. Join the 300,000 people that still bother to watch that shit. I'm no longer one of them. I watched that company for fucking years. I've been a viewer of that company throughout its history, up to and including day one 
I bought one of the, I was one of the people that bought the first ever fucking TNA weekly pay-per-view for $9.99. Did your fucking ass do that? Sit there and give me this. And this whole thing of trying to always throw up, of all the people you're going to do that to me. If anything, the gripe against me is that I'm too negative. The knock on me was that I would be to view things in a very cynical type of manner. And I'm too much of a complainer. So of all the people, and this is how stupid certain individuals can be in their philosophy or their train of thought. If you were going to sit there and try to debate me on something or talk about something, then get your shit straight. How is anybody going to accuse me, of all people, of being a WWE sheep? Difference. Viewer, quasi-fan now. Yeah, also have three decades of this crap. You know, three decades. That's a lot of history there. That's a lot of stuff there. That doesn't just go away. And frankly, newsflash, dumb dick. The entire North American wrestling business absolutely fucking sucks. The fact that people praise ROH and the dumb shit they do, or TNA and the dumb shit they do, or WWE and the dumb shit they do, or I see how often NXT is fucking praised as the second coming of Jesus Christ wrestling itself, when it's a bunch of overproduced, watered-down, vanilla-ass, independent-style bullshit. I can't believe how many people fucking overrate NXT and talk about how this is great fucking thing in the future. If that's the future, then what the fuck does that mean for the future? In one hour, they can barely be bothered to tell you one fucking story. It's a bunch of random matches that don't fucking mean anything, that don't help anybody get over. Same shit I see three hours every week on Raw. And your whole analogy about TNA GFW doesn't make any fucking sense. It makes absolutely no fucking sense. You're trying to base your argument around a company that is getting ready to do television tapings when they don't even have a fucking television deal. You are trying to base your argument of comparing GFW as TNA's NXT version like it's a developmental territory, ding dong dong dick, when a lot of the roster for GFW are TNA people. It doesn't work. It doesn't make fucking sense. Because so often, the case American Alicard, the things that you reference when it comes to TNA or WWE in particular, your interactions with me, absolutely make no fucking sense. They don't. Get over it. Sitting there and saying that WWE sucks, well, you're preaching to the fucking choir, so I don't know what you're trying to accomplish. And trying to sit there and spin it like TNA is good, you know that's fucking bullshit and you're part of the fucking problem if you sit there and sign off all the dumb shit that they do. There is nothing wrong with being a fan and demanding and expecting fucking better. And all the while, all the while, you're one of those people that can't even be bothered to actually subscribe to the right package via your cable or satellite provider to actually give TNA your rating. Can't even support them that way. You gotta stream the shit. So just stop. Just stop. You sound like a jackass when you do it seriously. Slider 15. Have you done any research on Ohio Governor John Kasich as a potential Republican nominee? Well, he will be a Republican nominee, so I most certainly will not be voting for him. Um, you know, I I I remember Kasich from his time on Fox News for freaking years, you know, going back to his days in the US House, everything else. I mean Kasich would be far from the biggest idiot in the group of idiots. And again, I don't want to sit there and put this out there to make you think that I'm automatically endorsing you support a Democratic candidate in 2016. As I've said before, and I will probably continue to say again, is I hate the two-party system. I think it's a fucking joke. I think the people that get all bent out of shape about which party is better, all the while, these two factions that belong to the same people, that have been bought and paid for by the same people, that take divergent paths to reach the same result. You know, this system is broken, and as long as people continue to contribute to the broken system, nothing is going to fucking happen, nothing is going to change, so cut the bullshit out. If you always contribute to the same problems, why are you going to bitch about them? You're creating the problems. And as I've said before, and I'll continue again to say on this, 
is that I'm not telling you to go with any of the Democratic candidates. There are parts, I will say in full disclosure, I do like about Elizabeth Warren if she ran, but there are parts that I really, really don't. Bernie Sanders. When I look at Sanders, I see a guy that there are some things that I really like about it, especially from a humanistic standpoint. But at the same point in time, do I like a totally socialistic type of view of things? Not necessarily. In Hillary Child, please. You know, the one advantage she's going to have on the campaign trail that nobody on either side of the aisle can defend or combat is the fact that she's got the greatest uh, promoter-in-chief that she could possibly have on the campaign trail is Bill. That's the factor. That is the definitive factor. And if anybody tells you anything else at this point in time, they don't have a fucking clue of what they're talking about. And if you don't think I have a clue about it, what I'm talking about, take a look back on the Schlage Daddy TV channel when it came to the 2002 presidential election. The bottom line is, is that when it comes to it, I'm not saying you have to support a Democratic candidate, because at this point I most certainly am not, but I just can't see how anybody in good conscience with any type of soul or spirit or any type of moral compass, or any type of care towards a fellow man could ever support any of these fucking Republican candidates. And I'm being perfectly honest. So Kasich is just another fucking one. He's not as bad or as extreme as the Tea Party nut jobs, especially the guys like the idiot Ted Cruz's and the Donald Trump's who are the epitome, especially in the case of Trump, of the ideal GOP candidate. And slowly but surely, the Republican Party will probably embrace him more and more because of that. Um... You look at Kasich, he's not as bad, but he's still one of those pro-big business type of guys. He had to adjust a little bit in Ohio based off of the situation, but that's not fundamentally what he believes. You know, at some point in time, the Republicans need to get their heads um, out from being buried under Arthur Laffler's ass. The supply-side economics don't fucking work. They're ridiculous. There is no evidence that they do what they are intended to do. And if you want any current proof of that, look at what's going on in Kansas. They don't increase tax revenues, and all the while, when you don't cut the spending, it creates huge budget shortfalls and huge budget deficits. And then, of course, you know, instead of investing in our future by investing in education, you have those idiots that will sit there, and the first thing they want to do is cut education spending. You know, just kind of fucking whatever. Um, let's see here. I don't know what else do we got. Uh, Demon Studios. Who's worse when it came to politics, Triple H or John Cena? Um. Push. I mean, Cena has been the unquestioned top guy for a decade. Triple H had a spot in a long time. And he married into that shit, too. And he used his penis for political purposes for his career. Did what he had to do. You guys can debate that. Who's the worst politicker? Is it Triple H or is it John Cena? I can make a strong argument for either one. All we know is, is LOL, Cena wins, hashtag breakfast clubs rules bitches, and hashtag Triple H can't make a son. That's what we know.